Hello and welcome to Wine Festival Online. Thanks for tuning in. We're Susie and Peter. We're both masters of wine and we are co-founders of Wine Festival Winchester. This year, of course, Wine Festival Online. We are. Now, where are we now? We are okay. the Grange, Hampshire. Now, um, you made a mention <laughs> of some sort of boy band here. I, I did, I did. Um, see what you think. I think you might know what I mean when, you, when this, <laughs> this video gets going. See what you think. So I'm going to paint the picture just just before we start. So okay. we've got lead partner uh, Zam Baring, we've got um, vineyard manager Phil, and we've got assistant vineyard manager Sam in front of hay bales. Sam's got a lovely French voice. Sam, hay bales. You do at one point expect them to break into sort of highly choreographed dancing and, and break out the mics. Uh, yeah, or, or it, a country it, dance. I think it's too Dolly much of a spoiler Parton. to say it never really happens, but we really <laughs> want it to happen. So maybe... Scamp, scamp the dog has a good go. A, a scamp, bit of something he does. Going, a so bit of noise it's there. all happening. It's, all, it's pretty intense. It's quite powerful stuff, I think, isn't it? But <laughs> maybe this is our way of saying, guys, if you could release a single at some stage soon, it would be a Christmas single. We need it. We'd buy it. Uh, it's something yeah. about his combine harvester. <laughs> Should we be serious? I've got a brand new combine right, so, harvester. Stop it. Right, so there is, however, some quite good content. There's quite intense content as well. So we thought, yeah. um, we, you know, we, a little we get bit of insight, explanation. explanation. We get a good insight into the 2020 harvest. Yeah. Uh, we see the vineyard and also a barn that's going to be their new winery, which is really, really exciting really to see, yeah. actually. But yeah. they do go into some detail. We thought we'd just explain some terms. There are a few terms, terms that, that get mentioned very, very quickly. And you used to think, oh, gosh, well, what does that mean? Well, bricks is the first one. They are not talking about what you build your house with. Bricks in, in a wine sense means the sugar level, how sweet your grapes have got. So the bricks level is the sweetness. So how ripe they are, therefore how what the alcohol will be like. Will it's be a measure ultimately. of ripeness, isn't it? Reserve wine is a term that comes up. Reserve wine, yeah. wine that's kept. So when you're making a sparkling wine, you can either make a vintage wine just from that one year, or you can add in wines from previous years, which is what a non-vintage champagne would be made up of. So the, the actual harvest at that time, plus the reserve wines that all get put together. So those reserve wines might be three or four or more years of, of wines put together to create a wine that is consistent. So every year it tastes the same. Your non-vintage will always taste the same. So we talk, they do talk a bit about reserve wines. Um, but equally, you, you are allowed 10, 15%, isn't it, of reserve wines, even if the wine is still uh, qualified as a vintage, you can still you're use some... You're complicating things now. <laughs> Let's reserve. not do that. Let's was, not do okay, that. Okay, well, one other way of complicating even further is sometimes you can make those reserve wines, uh, you can age them in oak or something you're not aging your other wine in. So it can, if you, when you add a little bit into the other wine, it can make a more complex blend. Anyway, that's reserve wines. Hope you're really confused now. Uh, <laughs> We're supposed to be making it clearer. Veraison. Veraison. We talk about Veraison. When the grapes are ripe, turn, turn ripe. Turn, turn, their colours, their the colours turn. turn, isn't it? So yeah. when, when they start, sort of, when they start, you get the berries, they form, and then there's a point in the season when they turn, they change colour, and if they're red, they change to that red colour. Red colour, and that's the Veraison. Um, TA. TA, you go on. I, Not I'm, the territorial army in this uh, sense. No, uh, no. Total acidity. So acidity levels, TA, one way, one measure of your acidity levels. There are various different acidity kinds of acidities in the grapes, but your TA is a rough measure of how acidic the grapes are. And obviously your, your TA will generally tend to fall as the grapes ripen. ripen. So the, the more the grapes ripen, the more sugar they get and, and the less acid uh, in them. So TA is just a measure, also another Anything measure else? like, like uh, bricks of, of sort of, of ripeness. But also we want some good acidity in the wines because we want them to stay bright and fresh. Uh, MLF. We another, certainly have good acidity in the UK. Yeah. MLF, so malolactic fermentation. So your, it's basically the acidity, the, the, the malic acidity, which is like in a green apple, so the really tart acidity turning more to a milky lactic acidity. So you can have a, some, you can allow some malolactic fermentation in your sparkling wines to, to just mm, ease off on softens, the on the yeah. soften the the really la uh, malic acidity. So if it's, a, if it's a year where the grapes quite unripe, you can do more MLF to make them softer. Sometimes in, in some countries where it's very warm, they don't want to do it because it keeps the acidity in. And then lastly, Solera. And I think um, Phil does explain this. But Phil does. Yeah, I it's mean, a system of blending, fractional basically. blending blend between barrels. You sort of blend between years. It's a way of it's another way of blending. Um, if we haven't been clear, which I, I don't think we have, uh, or oh. you find any questions, well, she has, I haven't. Um, <laughs> if you have any questions, please do ask questions, do comment. Yeah. You can comment on the YouTube comments. Uh, you'll need to be signed in to do that, but please do there. If not, send us an email if you want to, or just hook up with us, send us a question on, on social. Uh, all of the details are on the website. We'll be very happy to clarify anything you don't understand. Yeah, so we would like, just at this point, to say thank you. Huge thank you to our sponsors, particularly our headline sponsor, 
Rathbones. Now this video that you're about to watch will stay live so you can watch it again or if you miss it now or miss a bit of it then you can watch uh, catch up later mm. and of course there will be another masterclass after this one if you want to stay tuned in please do stay with us all day we're also uh, running competitions competitions for prizes which is i get really excited about this clearly <laughs> it motivates me we've got some you brilliant win. wines you're not allowed to win brilliant competitions uh to tasting selfie competition. So send us in pictures of yourself tasting along to Wine Festival online. You can win a prize for that. Also, we've got the, the Sharp Eyes competition where you have to spot uh, really funny little details in the background or, or what people say in these videos. So prizes for those, those details are on the website. One other thing I would say about the, this, uh, the Grange Hampshire Masterclass is if you want to buy afterwards, and we really would encourage you to buy these wines, they're fantastic. There is a special offer, special discount, but you have to watch the video to find that special uh, offer code Zam, Zam is a tease, isn't he? he is a tease. Watch the video. <laughs> uh, if you have any problems watching the video, hello at thewinefestival.co.uk is the email that you need to use to contact us and let us know. For now, though, we will leave you with the, uh, the with Hampshire's best boy band, Zam, <laughs> Phil, and Sam. From the Grange, Hampshire. Enjoy the masterclass. Hello and welcome to a very, very golden Burgessfield Vineyard after harvest. Here's Phil, uh, our vineyard manager. Good morning. And Sam, our assistant vineyard manager. Hi. I am Sam, bearing the lead partner at uh, Grange State Wines and we're going to talk about the 2020 harvest. Phil, how was the 2020 harvest for you? Uh, the harvest in the end was um, pretty successful from a from a quality point of view. Sugars and acids um, were, were were spectacular actually. In, right right in the sweet spot, we managed to get it this year. Uh, it wasn't the easiest of years. You know, we were frosted from the beginning. Um, you know, a late May frost depleted our quantity, um, our tonnage. You know, straight away. How low was the yield? I mean, what 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 do, were you hoping I, to get, and what did we get? You know, we we were hoping we we always hoped for around seventy, you know, seventy eighty tons, and we picked thirty six tons in the end. Yeah, terrible. So but, it's sort of sub. But yeah, quality was excellent. Quality was excellent. Yeah, um, it, it was a relatively dry year, wasn't it, um, throughout the season? Yeah, through the the very zone, we've been through the very zone pretty quickly this year quicker than the other years it was it was you know much less stressful than some years and um, that the sort of ripening phase Verizon happens you know end of end of August and through September so it's the, the sugar production in the in the in the grapes and, and the, the, the color change in the reds um, and it it it's very different every year you know some years it's very very wet um, this year it was Relative, relatively easily. Relatively Excellent. Easy, yeah. And can you remember anything about the 2016 harvest? Because we're going to be tasting the 2016 wines. Can you, can you just give us a very, very quick high level thing about 2016 as a year? So, headlines for 16, it's hard to think back really. Uh, fairly cold winter. Um, we we were frosted, but not as heavily as we were in 17. Quite a lot of rain at flowering. Um, so it meant there was a mirandage, the, the, the bunches weren't formed particularly well or evenly, it wasn't that homogenous in the vineyard, so it was quite hard to predict yield, uh, but we picked 50 tonnes in the end. Can you remember what Verizon, was it nice August, September that year? I think, again, it was the beginning of a, a run of classic Indian summers actually, so the back end of September and, and October came really good so it helped it helped us out in the end decent bricks good good bricks 17 17 and a half bricks but um sort of quite high tas actually 14 between 14 and 15 ta on on all three varieties but good phs you know close to three actually on so most. you would have, you would have imagined that we'd need some malolactic fermentation to help that ta yeah I, I'm, I'm almost certain emma put 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 a decent portion of the cuvees through mallow um, okay. which will soften things which would have softened things out quite nicely. Well let us go to our Al Fresco tasting room and see what they taste like. So now here is our Al Fresco ta tasting table, slightly rustic uh, setup, but this is the derelict agricultural barn into which we are going to be putting a winery 
during the course of next year, hopefully ready for harvest 2022. But now we better get on with the tasting. Two wines are classic non-vintage and our pink non-vintage. We're gonna be interrupted quite a bit by Sca um, Scamp as he tries to find animals to bite in the hay behind us. But I better just gonna sanitize my hands briefly while we open the bottles and um, then we're gonna let you know what we think about them. So this is the, as I said, it's a, the non-vintage based on the 2016 harvest. It's got 15% reserve wines in it from the 2015 harvest. And it is made up of 65% Chardonnay, 20% Mernier and 15% Noir. Let's have a taste. Let me just give you guys a glass. Right, let's go guys. What do you think? It's a nice golden color. <laughs> gentle and consistent stream of bubbles and it's got a sort of creamy note on the nose doesn't it yeah very creamy buttery mm. what else are you getting on the nose uh, a bit of citrus straight straight off a, a, a bit of citrus for me um, Apple, yes, there's, there's appleiness with that cream, isn't there? It's it's mm. rather nice with the the the, the acidity, the sharpness of the apple with that cream in it. What I always get, and I think it's the Mernier that does it, is that it coats the inside of your mouth in a really lovely way. It kind of fills the mid palate is really nice and full. Mm. It's not, um, it's, the, the acidity is not too sharp. So this has had three years on Lees. Mm. Um, that is uh, lying on the dead yeast cells that have created the secondary fermentation on bottle. Once, that, once the yeasts have eaten all the sugar, the remaining little bits of sugar in the bottle, they then settle to the bottom of the, bo of the, of the bottle and the wine lies with them and it gets those nice. autolytic, bready, richer flavours and characters, sort of biscuity sort of richness and, and a sort of creaminess that I think comes from the Chardonnay element having been uh, in contact with the Lees for, for a good long time. So all, all of our wines get three years at least on, on Lees. And I'm beginning to work on uh, trying to make the make sure they get quite a lot of time on cork as well to add a little bit of development through the um, through just having a, a little bit more oxidation or potential oxidation through the cork. Yeah, I think time on cork before release um, is quite important. It allows the wine to settle. Um, yeah. Um, you know, once the final dosage has been done. The wine can be a little bit disjointed, mm. and I find, um, again, just not rushing. If you have time, if you can afford time to, to, to allow the wine to settle. What about the malolactic element on this? Because we said when we were remembering about the 2016 harvest that the, the TAs were quite high, weren't they? The total acidic acidity levels in the, in the juice. They were up at sort of 14 yeah, they were. Rather than sort of in the 13s or the 12s where we'd like it. I think this has something like 30% of the wines that went into it um, have had some malolactic fermentation. Right. What is yeah. that? What's, what's that? Fit? Sam, what do you think that does to the, to the flavours? The... Well, it, it softens uh, the, the sharpness you could have here in England producing English sparkling wine. Um, so um, it's interesting because the acidity stays here and it keeps all of the fruits you have and you can't really have in other countries. Yeah, 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 sure. And um, so in I think words, it's... There's a, there's, a, there's a level of fruit in English grapes that you don't get yeah, elsewhere. Yeah, exactly. And the acidity holds that there. Yeah, clearly, clearly. Yeah. I think that's right. So yeah. you want some, some malolactic, but not too much. Yeah, exactly. So, and every vintage is different. So it's the winemaker have to make the, the choice on yeah. which wine uh, or which part of of 
a wine should go into malolactic or not, which, or not, are, which yeah. are the blending elements. Some of this has been, uh, what, what, it, of the blending elements, we have put, uh, Emma put about 14% of the blending elements through an oak barrel. Uh, um, so it's got a little bit of oak that maybe adds to the creaminess and brings a little sort of touch of sweetness and vanilla to the, to the flavours. And, and how does Thai, how does the Thai, the, 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 the last pressings, interact with the oak? Sam? Well, it's um, because the Thai is richer in uh, different elements like tannins and aromas, which is in the skin. Yeah, All yeah. The ma- most of the aroma are in the skins, not in the pure. This Thai combined with oak, um, so you would have the, the benefit of both. Um, mm-hmm. I'll have to explain that. So, more so the oak brings out the best elements of the tar. Yeah, it's softened yeah. and, and brings out what, what's strong in it. Right. And the tie, just to be clear, is the, is the, the, when, you, when the grapes go into the press, they, the first juice that comes out is the, is the, the free run and then the cuvee, um, which is the sort of the main body of the juice where you're not squeezing grapes too hard. And then towards the end, when, when the press just begins to kind of finish its cycle and is really pushing quite hard, that's when you get the tie, which has got more elements of skin and... You know, it's just it's, it's, it's mm. phenolics and flavours come out of the tie. I think that's about it. Should we move on to the pink? Let's do it. Now we're going to try the pink. Um, again, non-vintage, based on the 2016 harvest. Um, this had only about four or five percent of reserve wines from the 2015 harvest and is a blend of 63 percent Pinot Meunier and 37 percent Pinot Noir. So it's got plenty of that M- Meunier florality and, um, and, and Noir fruit, which we hope will be present in this tasting. Oops. So what have we got? Lovely, lovely pink. Very, very delicate, so silvery. Yeah. Almost onion skin pink. Um, fantastic fruit. Really yeah, really very nice. powerful nose. Very powerful fruit, isn't it? There's sort of red and white fruits and there's some red currants. There's some, there's a bit of edge of strawberry and a bit of creaminess in there too. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, really, it's nice. It's like a st- strawberry sorbet or ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Again, strawberries and cream. Yeah. Mm. It's a very um, consistent um, aroma and flavour to, to... Like the 20... No, the previous one. Yeah, it's... Yeah. it's, it's, it's um, the platinum winning previous one. It follows on really nicely. I yeah. think it's, it's, a, it's in a very similar style, you know? Mm. There's a there's a bit of biscuit and brioche there, but it's um it's lovely, it's lovely and floral. Like. Definitely a blessing to have thirty seven percent of the vineyard planted in Mernier. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think it's really work, works so well for us. I really love it. The, the 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 nose is very, very rich, but strangely enough the palate is not quite as rich. And it, and it's there's an there's an acidity there that, that stops it getting flabby or too much, doesn't it? I mean, it's quite nice. The, um, the it's quite kind of it's, yeah. it's it's not it's not soft in any way. This wine, it's it's really delicious. Mm. But it's yeah, the flavors are kind of maintaining to yeah. drive your drive the flavors in your in your palate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It stays quite long in the mouth. Mm. So it really does. Yeah, mm. and it's, it's focused got a nice long as well. Finish. Despite the, um, the the softening and the long time on lees, it's it's still pretty vibrant. You know, it's um, a surprisingly large amount of it was put through malolactic fermentation. Re- um, malolactic fermentation is this thing where the a bacteria, a lactic bacteria or lactobacillus of some sort, changes the malic acid and turns it into lactic acid, which is a less potent form of acidity. And in wines with lots of malolactic, you you worry that there is not enough acidity. Uh, and they become a bit flabby and loose, but this is not. This is far from flabby. Mm. 
and only three or four percent of reserve wine in this one. 2015 was our first year at Hattingley, so that was the first time we had any wines to reserve. Yeah. And this is just being the, seeing the beginning of that, but the, obviously the 17s and the 18s and the 19s and indeed the 20s from this year are all going to have reserve wines from the previous years. So the 20 will have five years worth of reserve wines yeah, exactly. it, all blended together. So a big Solera system of... What does that mean? What's the Solera system? Um, well, I think it's multiple vintages, a, a, a portion, a fraction of um, each vintage being added. What we tend to do about, about, is, is take 20% of our classic blend and stick that in a tank. So each year we take 4,000 litres of the classic blend and stick it in a tank and leave it for the whole year. So, but that classic blend, blend, because it was a 2019, will have had wines from 18, 17, 16 and 15 mm. in it because they were all in the previous year's wines. It's a very, very useful element to, to, yeah. to have in it's the blending. It's complex and rich, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, every time we, when we do the blendings, every time we add or we integrate this, uh, this reserve, there is something, suddenly the wine takes a, a bigger yes, portion. Yes, exactly, bigger... that's right, that's entirely right. You add in even a tiny amount, even yeah. five, you know, three, four, five, six, seven percent, it suddenly lifts and changes the wine in the, in the most amazing way. And it also, what it does is it takes out the uh, sort of the ups and downs of each annual harvest uh, and sort of softens them and means that we adopt a more consistent sort of house style in the, in especially, in, well, only in the non-vintage. What we have got this year, though, which I'm really excited to try, is some magnums of the, so non-vintage classic magnums. Uh, and they are sitting there, and we haven't tasted them yet. They've now had close to 40, mm, 44 months, 42 months on lead. I think and, we're going to... And gonna, they're, they're non-disgorged still. They're, they're still they're on They're undisgorged. Lead. They're still on the lead. Fantastic. They're going to... I'm really excited. Everybody yeah, says that, that sparkling wines mature in a very fascinating way on lees in magnums. It's something to do with the amount of air to the volume of wine. Oxygen contact, um, yeah. English sparkling... Um, Ages, ages beautifully anyway, you know, it's, it's, um, it's that, that, that acidity that, that, that enables it to, to be aged as long as... My first ever sort of, um, you know, light bulb um, moment with champagne and the, appreci for the, the, the appreciation of champagne was just a non-vintage Louis Roderer that had been sat in, um, in, in the cellars of, the, of the, the company I was working at the time, but they, they sort of found it. They found this sort of stash yeah. of... 100, or 100 cases and I, I bought a couple of cases and it was just, it was so, How so was delicious. It? it was, well it's difficult to say because it was a non-vintage but right. it must have been a 20 year old, 20, 20, 30 year old non-vintage. Wow. But that hadn't moved so yeah. you know obviously provenance is key but if, if, it, if, it's, if it's kept correctly and it's just allowed time, um, it, was, it, was, it was like Grand Cru White Burgundy um, with a tiny bit of pétillance. Oh. And it was, it's I mean, exactly uh, liquid butter. So, yeah, so, so, so basically, these will, with a bit of luck, taste, still taste absolutely fabulous in 2020. Well, no, sorry, in 2040, in 20 years' time. I would think they will. I, I mean, if you can... If you can obviously not if you drink can, <laughs> if, you can resist, yeah, if you can resist, yeah. yeah. I think we're just about done. So thanks very much for joining us. Um, uh, we have got a special offer on both the classic and the pink in the run-up to Christmas. Uh, so come and have a look at the website www.thegrangewine.co.uk. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.